welcome back to What Are She Noobs for General Disturbance. This is the 212A, it's the tier 9 Soviet SPG. This one's located on the south spawn of Siegfried Line, and it's under the command of Angelina75, and this is her first submission towards the competition for this week with Talon 1958. As you may know, last week, Talon managed to score an ace tanker, which won the competition outright. Yes, he took out his GW Panther and he absolutely wrecked the enemy team. And that's why he got the weekend lion and ordered his toast early. Angelina is using the 212A and she's actually got the big 203mm howitzer, capable of doing 900 alpha and penetrating 52 millimeters of armor. The enemy tanks are starting to come into sight, so she's realigning her aim, trying to get shots on them. Okay, there are. There is a new there's there, but there's also a BZ 176, and I think she wants a piece of him. Rams out. Oh! Hit the building! And she's relocating to avoid counter battery. You don't have to go very far, just just far enough to actually avoid another shot coming in your direction. I think one of the reasons why Angelina is moving closer and closer to the uh, infield is actually due to that. Yes, the LC M90 was uh, causing her a bit of uh, disquiet. If he'd actually got closer to her, she might have had to move all together. Rounds out. Direct hit. Right on the money there, 299 hit points for a frontal shot on a 7032. Her next target looks like it's going to be the Progetto 66, and she's not moving position, and the good reason, she's got a great angle here. She can hit the Emil 2 and also that Progetto at the same time with one round, and I think that's what she's after. She's almost completed her load. She fires the round in. Oh, she hit something! She definitely hit something, and I suspect she hit the Progetto because uh, he was unspotted at the time, and the shell stopped before it got to the Emil. So I think that's one of those instances where she got double bubble. She actually hit more than one tank at the same time. Now, looking back, you can see that Yudez running away, very badly wounded. And you can see where she hit the 7032, right on top of the turret, in the weak spot. And she's done it again! 244 hit points this time. And she's moving before anyone can counter battery here. I'm taking the rear view at the moment just to see if the enemy tries to fire against her. No, no sign that they're doing that. Okay. Who's next? Angelina knows the value of actually keeping up the fire rate to maximize the amount of damage you can do. There's the Emil. She's going for him again. Almost fully dialed in. Rounds out straight away. And yes. 179 this time. And changing position. Now that's 7032. He's actually moved position. He's got a lot closer. And he's threatening some of our guys. There he is. You can see the second shot actually hit the upper plate. Oh, and there's the Udes 14-5. Now, that would be a good target because he's got relatively thin armor. He's lining up ahead of his path. Rounds out. Ah, she hit him in the rear. Oh, my God, she got a penetration. 991, a high roll. She hit the rear of him, and he's got very thin armor on the rear. So that one is a big gain. She's now done 1,713. And remember, that doesn't include the hit that she made on that Progetto because it just wasn't recorded. But she is moving inbound. And the reason why is that T-44. We can't see him. We do have two teammates nearby who might spot him. But it's actually safer for Angelina to move over that ridge line so that the enemy can't affect her. She's having a quick look at that T-44. He is taking damage. He's a one-shot now. She can land a shell near him. He's toast. Oh, she fired when he stopped, but... Oh, she got him anyway! He backed up. He went into the 
the splash zone and she took another kill okay well only 28 hit points but it's a kill it's another gun out of the game and we're one ahead of the enemy at the moment okay bz176 is next he hasn't marked the target but there was a request from our teammates to actually get that tank and i had the suspicion that if she does our teammates are going to be very happy rounds out lands behind him and stuns him changing position again and the enemy is still one tank down okay i knew there's 14 5 the same one she hit has been spotted by al Barask, and i think he's about to be executed and now we've got a chrysler k coming up now angeline can help the Barask on our team by actually stopping this chrysler if he if she can shell landed short That's one of the things I really do enjoy in the game is uh, to actually try and help my teammates from afar uh, if I can actually slow the enemy down before they get to him and that way he can reload in time and then get some shots. I think that was a shot from the brass there hitting the Hori too. Okay, we can see where the enemy RT is now. Just got spotted. He's out in the field. It's an M53, M55 rounds out right at the back no nope, didn't get it quite on that one but i think she would have wounded him splashed him at the very least changing position to avoid count battery there's a charioteer in the field but there's also another enemy tank near the castle gates the enemy arty has been spotted and he dies he goes down to the scorpion arty she's now dialing in on the ho re too who's using that bush and his gun depression rounds out yep that would definitely upset him and we've got enemy uh, we've got our teammates in the backfield now on their team i think uh, their team is now going to collapse going for the units who's running away they're down to just three tanks now angeline's having a really good game Okay, lining up a shot on the Judas, who goes down, which means now there's only one that tank left. It's the tank that she hit with a, 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 a shot when he was unspotted, the Ho-Ri, who's somewhere near that tree that's been knocked over. He wouldn't have run very far. There he is. Rounds out. Long flight time. She gets some stun, which might mean she'll get the stun assist when he goes down. I think she is going to get it. Let's hope she gets it. Yes, she gets some. And yes, he goes down. And that is the end of the game. Well, that was a good game for Angelina 75 in the 212A. She managed to get a third class tanker in that one, as well as a bruise medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, she got seven. And she got a confederate as well for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on her team, despite the fact she actually got a kill in that game as well which was, of course, the T-44, who's splashed in the field. Her win eight was 2,575, so she set a good marker. That's a high Unicum st standard to start with. And let's have a look and see. Did She did fire one shot at the, there it is, the Progetto. She managed to score 390 hit points from that shot that was went through the gap and stopped before it got to the Emil 2, which means that, yes, the Progetto took a big hit with that shell, uh, because, of course, he has relatively thin armor. And the Emil got splashed in the process as well. He lost 179 hit points during that game as well. So let's have a look at team scores. Well, Angelina didn't get the highest damage in the game. The Barask actually picked up a Confederate and Tank Sniper for 3,135 hit points. In second place, we had the Emil II on the enemy team with 3,044. In third place, the Scorpion G with 3,024. And Angelina, 2,547. When it came to kills, it was the Scorpion did the best with three kills. Two kills went to the Brass, the Scorpion G, the A Phase 1, and on the enemy team, only one tank managed to get more than one kill, and that was the Emil 2. Angelina only got the one kill, the T-44. And when it came to base XP, she's a little further down the table in sixth place, because the Scorpion G managed 1,163. 
1053 went to the Barras, 1015 went to the Scorpion, and those are the three top players, the only three players who managed to get over a thousand in that game. And have you noticed they're all tier eight games? Yes, uh, tier eight tanks. So it was a tier nine game with tier eight tanks in it. And uh, yes, they scored much higher than everyone else because they were hitting higher tier opponents every time they did. Angelina got 737 out of that one. She fired 12 rounds, a decent amount for this sort of game. Five direct hits, one penetrating shot on the Yudas as he was retreating, and 10 splash. Damage of 2,547, all of it at more than 300 meters. She damaged seven, killed one, there's the Confederate, and 503 hit points of stun assist of 10 stuns. She earned 14,012 credits from the game and 4,423 experience points because she did manage to complete a mission during that one. So that's a, a good marker to set down. Uh, Talon has already responded, and I'll go straight into his replay right away. In the second replay, Talon 1958 is driving the GW E100, the tier 10 German SPG with a 21 centimeter howitzer. Game on. Now, as many of you know, this RT, like the 2128, never actually existed. 212A, they were trying to make it uh, work, but it was based on the KV-220 hull, and the Soviets were so busy pushing out tanks, they didn't have time to make an SPG like the 212A, and in the end it just didn't get built. It never happened. Talon is aiming down the valley. First target appears to be an STB-1, but he might change that if somebody spots something else in there. STB-1 is trying to proximity spot anybody who gets close to the bottleneck. Now he's trying to see if there's anyone there. This RT does have a very high damage rate and, uh, and well, high damage, I should say. Unfortunately, that shell only stunned the STB-1. 21 centimeter will do 900 alpha penetrating 53 millimeters of armor and it's normally got a 37.39 second reload. Talon's obviously reduced that. He's dialing in on what appears to be a Panzer Kampfwagen 7. Rounds out. Direct hit. Looks like it hit his slower plates as well and he's changing position to avoid counter battery. This map is one of those where you really do need to move after each shot because if you don't, you are inviting to get counter battery. He's just checking his position. That T92 hasn't moved very far since he started there. Yes, you can see exactly. It went to the lower plate of that Panzer Kampfwagen Sieben, but it didn't penetrate. Definitely hit the lower plate there. He's trying to work out his angles. He can't get a shot on that one. And in fact, actually, it looks like he can't get a shot on the Rhino Sorrente either. It's just um, not, not possible. Not from this angle. But he can hit the STB-1 if he can put the round in. Yes, he damaged him. And it looks like the enemy is trying to hit some of the defenders. Looks like that strip 103B was just on the receiving end. Aiming downrange. The thing about playing Arty is to pump out as many shells as you can. He's even looking at the town just in case there's a possibility that he can get a shot into there to help his teammates because it's not going so well in the town. We've got a super conqueror who's kind of retreating. I think too many tanks went down the valley and too few actually went into the town. Okay, he's looking at a mouse. Unfortunately, he's going to go behind that building and we're not going to see him until he gets to that corner. He's still on the move. 907 preceding him. A little late on the 907, but he's still got some splash. He's backing up, and I think he needs to get behind the T-92. 
The problem is that if he stays where he is, they both might get counter battery. Okay, the 113 is asking for help. A super conqueror has gone down. Going for the mouse. Rounds out. He got 191 from that shot. Oh, somebody else is picking up uh, more damage, but he's not getting any stun assists because the mouse got rid of the stun as quickly as he could. That's the Team 92 just firing in and missing. Okay, things are not going well. We're being pressured into this corner. He's trying to line up a shot on the Bosch. Rounds out. Direct hit. That's definitely going to help. But he's now in a bit of a pickle because he's actually backed up into the T92. He needs to completely turn around and go yeah, the other way. He's been spotted. He's been spotted. He needs to get into cover. There's the enemy RT. Ow. That just hit the T100 LT, I think was it. No, it hit the um, Object 907 on our team. Okay, Talon's aiming down the valley this time. I think he needs to back up just a little. Back up just a little, and then you can get the shot. Okay. He's been spotted again. Well, at least he hit the Yeguru. And he's now taken a round from that STB-1. You can see it was a heat round. It actually went through the armor around the the gun, the howitzer. And here comes the enemy RT again. Still going after the 907. This is not going well for the team. Okay, he's loaded trouble is that he can't look and shoot without actually getting hit himself. If he pops up over the rise, the enemy tanks will shoot him. He might be able to put a round into the mouse. This is almost suicidal. Oh, no. He couldn't get the gun to the press. Unfortunately, there's zero gun depression on this RT. And as he was over a rise, when he fired, the shell zipped right over the top of the uh, enemy tank and he just he couldn't get the damage. Here's the end of battle results. And I'm afraid all he managed to get out of that one was a bruise medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got seven and his win eight was only 893. What we do know, though, is he actually did fire more rounds than most of the team because, of course, he was trying to keep active and pumping those shells out where they could do the most damage to the enemy. And sadly, that meant that uh, he was one of the higher scorers on the, his team, but the enemy team was much stronger. Yes, he managed to get 1,506 hit points, but the highest damage in the game went to the Fosh B on the enemy team. We've got a Brothers in Arms and High Caliber for 5,610 hit points. Second highest damage went to one of his own teammates in the new Japanese tank destroyer. He got 5,000. And in third place, we've got the Super Conqueror in the town who managed to do 3,904 hit points of damage before he got wiped out. Those are probably the two best players on our team. But sadly, the enemy team, well, they were just much more efficient. And we can see that when it came to kills, well, there was only two kills by Talon's team. And when it came to base XP, we can see he's way down with only 147. And you can see the enemy team did much, much better. Look at the detail. He only fired eight shots in the game, but then most of his teammates didn't get many shots off at all. So you can see by the team score, there's a large number of players with zero damage. Yeah, so five players with zero damage on their score. Uh, Talon managed to fire eight shots, got three direct hits on the enemy. No penetrations, but he did get nine splash. So in some, some of his shells actually splash more than one tank. 1,506 hit points, all a bit at more than 300 meters. Received four hits from the enemy. Two penetrated, two non-penetrations, and 400 blocked by armor. Damaged seven of the enemy. Didn't get any kills, uh, unfortunately, but he did get 662 hit points of stun assist off eight stuns. 
He suffered a loss for the game of 15,862 credits, mainly because he just didn't get a huge amount of damage out of the game. He got three bonds because it was tier 10 and 220 XP as well. So not a very good battle. And again, most of his teammates were not shooting the tanks that he was hitting. But he did send in another replay, so we'll have a quick look at that one. In the third replay, we've got Talon on the north spawn of Prokhorovka in the Hummel. Well, as usual, he's got the small howitzer, the, the same howitzer on the Griller, still 15 centimeter, but got a much better trajectory than the Top Gun, which is got a much faster speed as well, which makes it um, trajectory rather flat and difficult to hit targets that are behind obstacles. He's telling his teammates by aiming across the, uh, the gap where he's looking. And oh, look at this enemy KV-1SA. He's been spotted right down the far end. I think he's probably going to... No, he's not stopping. He's keeping moving. Oh, rest... Unfortunately, Talon got a big, big rescue bloom just at the wrong moment. I think it was all the movement of the uh, the aim, mainly down to the fact that you see it's got a very narrow arc. This RT, only 30 degrees. So unfortunately, that shell missed. Over on the other side of the battlefield, we've got a Nashorn. You can see, even though it's got a the short stop gun, it's still very, very good. Oh, that was right on target, but the target was already dead. The Nashorn went down to RM44. There's three RT in this game, by the way, on either side. Very unusual. In fact, that's been happening a lot since they made the uh, 1.21 or 1.20.1, I should say been seeing loads of games with 3RT and so I think Wargaming have decided that they can't get enough um, games with just two RT in otherwise they'll be keeping the RT players waiting for an extended time so they've decided to put some games in with 3RT. Nobody's covering the hill and that doesn't look so good but we've got a VK-301P on the other side of the battlefield. Rounds out. Well, it hit the aim point, but unfortunately, it looks like that VK is still alive. It wasn't alive for very long, though, because the Giro got him. Okay, there's that strip that he was looking for. Hiding behind the wagon. Not a great place to be, unfortunately, but Talon will fire his round in and... Yes, he does get something. 203, and he gets some sun assist. And the strip is dead. Now, the enemy tank on the hill has been spotted now. It's a KV-1SA. Oh, somebody just hit it. I think that was the Fifi that fired there. Meanwhile, there's a Type T-34 up there. Lining up. No, he didn't go back all the way, but he is taking damage. So Talon fires in. Nope, didn't get that one. I think having three RT actually does increase the fire on the enemy tanks to such an extent that it becomes difficult to do some damage to them. Okay, dialing in. Rounds out. Nope get anything from that one either we just see, saw the tracer coming out from that general direction okay, it's almost maximum range to try and hit that covenanter it's got a flat rescue in fact he's too far away from the target to actually get a shot see the tracer from the other arties coming in there's the Covenanter, just blasting away his four shells before popping down to reload. Okay, ahead of his path, that's it. Rounds out, looks good. Nope, unfortunately he didn't get that one. The Covenanter changed path, and he's going to go down momentarily.
We do know where one of the other RTs are located in the usual position of the bushes at the back down in Grid Square K3. Meanwhile, up on top of the hill, we've got a Type T34. And he fires just at the target skill. Again, he's not getting much damage, mainly down to the fact that uh, his teammates are just too hot. They're getting the shots in and the kills before he can. Again, no spotting, so we can't see the target. And the moment we do see the target, it's too late. Well, that Covenanter is going to die on the other side of the battlefield because the Leopard is almost on top of him. But meanwhile, Talon appears to be going for that KD-1SA. Bounce out. This should hit. It does. Big hit. 189. And the target goes down. He finally got some stun assist off that one as well. That Covenanter managed to survive out in the battlefield. Oh, this IKV-103 is moving fast, but he just got tracked. Line up ahead of his path. Stop. And rounds out. Oh, too late. Yeah, he's having terrible luck with this battle. And the enemy are down just a four left. They got a Thunderbolt and a three arty. He's trying to get as close as he dares. There's the Thunderbolt. Let the aim settle. In the meantime, he's going back to the where the RT is normally spotted. You can hear the chaser from the enemy RT flying overhead. Okay, we're dialing in on Thunderbolt. Just got hit by one of our RTs, and that's an accurate one as well. 168. There's the M41. It's going to be a while before we're loaded, though. And there's the SU-8. Okay, he's lining up, trying to work out where he's going. That's it. Okay, he's still in the bush. Both players anticipated that he would actually move through that spot, but in fact, he actually got further forward, and he's gone, and that's the end of the game. Here's the end of battle stats, and I'm afraid that's only a third-class tanker for Talon 1958 in the Hummel. He did get a Bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits, and his win eight was 838. But sadly, that's not enough to beat Angelina, because if you remember, Angelina has a third class, a Bruiser, and a Confederate. So that means she's still in the lead with this game. If you go back to the rest of the details... And we can see that uh, Talon did fairly well. He got 620 hit points of damage. But look at these two players here. The uh, Striv M4257 got 2,175 hit points. And then this player, which is, I think, one of the Japanese tank destroyers, got 1,346. And the highest damage, uh, the third highest damage, was the Fifi on our team, 861. The highest damage on the enemy team was their VK3002M, who only got 814. Talon didn't get any kills, which puts him way down the table there. The top scorer on that game was the M44 on our team, with five kills, and the M4257 managed to get three. And when it came to base XP, Talon's a little closer to the top. He got 477, which actually puts him higher than anyone on the enemy team, who didn't score very highly indeed. And Talon was in sixth place on base XP, with only 477. He only got, well, 13 rounds off, which is quite decent, but a lot of the targets he fired at had already been killed. So a lot of tag, a lot of shots he fired, which would have got direct hits and got damage, unfortunately turned out to be nothing. He got two direct hits on the enemy, five splashes and 620 hit points. He damaged three of the enemy, didn't get any kills, but he did get 573 hit points of stun assist off five stuns. He managed to earn 36,610 credits profit, and he got 1,431 XP, 
And he says, at least it's a win. Well, it is a win. No doubt about that. But sadly, that means Angelina is definitely in the lead. And she's going to be in the lead for the foreseeable future until Talon can come away with a win. And I suspect that it would be a good idea for him to change to either the GW Panther or one of the other artists that he's rather good at to see if he can get that ace tanker. If you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.